Have you ever thought of what those analog plugins really do? Yeah, me too. So today we're going to find out. And one way to find out exactly what a plugin does in terms of if it maybe adds harmonics, like a tone character, which those analog plugins are supposed to do, you can use Tone Generator. I think most DOS comes with some sort of tone generator. This is Studio One 4 that I'm using. And we want to use a scene wave form here. And I also loaded up a fab filter, which will act as our uh, spectrum analyzer today. Use whatever you want, but I just use fab filter since it's one of my favorite EQ plugins for surgical EQ. So what I have going on here is the tone generator on a track here, which is then routed to a bus where I have uh, three of my favorite plugins to use. Uh, it's Ships by Waves. It's one of my go-to plugins when it comes to drums and guitar and not vocals per se, but drums and guitar is, this is my go-to for adding low end and high end. Uh, we have the famous uh, CLA-2A and we finally have, I think, the most used virtual channel. I mean the most used console emulator from Slate. So we're going to try that as well. So we're going to turn on the tone generator and generate a tone around, let's say, 200 hertz. We can see here the tone at 200 hertz. That's our main tone, and you can actually you can't actually hear anything because I actually muted, or I'm routing this analyzer out to a different output. Anyway, it's a tone. You don't need to hear it. That's not important. We need to see what's going on. That's the most important. Okay, so let's start with Shep's EQ. So the tone generator is generating a. Uh, just a single tone, around 200 hertz, nothing else. So let's turn on the plugin and see what it does when this tone generator goes through this plugin and hit the analyzer. So let's check it out. Okay, so by just turning on the plugin, I haven't done any tweaking in the plugin. We can actually see that it adds harmonics around 400 hertz, which, uh, which is double the 200. And we have around 800 hertz, which is double of 400, and 1.2k and 1.6 around there. So this is basically it. What those analog plugin does, except for tweaking EQ, they add harmonic distortion, which basically is harmonic tones. So if we boost some stuff. Boosting EQ won't do pretty much anything since we only have one tone generator, so skip that. But what if we boost the input of the plugin, which is supposed to boost the harmonics as well? So let's check it out. Oh, a lot of stuff going on. Okay, it actually didn't do that much. It sits around minus. 105 dB, something around that. Yeah, it didn't do that much, to be honest. But we have a preamp knob here as well. So if we crank that on the line side, there we go. Oh! Look at this. Harmonic distortion. Well, if this was a vocal or a bass track or something else, it might sound pretty terrible at this point. <laughs> but some of it might sound good if we keep it like like that. This is what makes the sound sound more pleasing to the ear. The analog world gives a tone, some harmonic distortion. We can go the other way around as well, which is on the mic side. And here we can clearly see a harmonic distortion going on. Really crank it. Look. This is basically some sick ass distortion at the moment. And you can see how it pulse. That's pretty cool as well. Alright, so that's 
waves Shep's EQ. Let's take a look at the compressor. This is my go-to compressor for vocals for the first compressor or the second. I usually combine this with a 76 emulator. Uh, so this is more for the tones and let's check out what tones you get for just turning the turning it on. Wow. Take a look at this. And it also added some low end. And you have to keep this in mind when you use compressors like this. That it will add some unusable low end here. So you have to high pass after, if you ask me. That's just my opinion. But when you use compressors like this, even on vocals or guitars or whatever, add a high pass to clean up the low end. Since you can see that it adds really crank it here. We can see all the harmonic distortion and it's pretty cool. Look at that. If you crank the peak reduction, the general tone gets lower, but they even out the harmonic distortion as well. That's pretty cool. All right, and let's check out virtual emulator, console emulator from Slate. Just turning it on. You can see we get some harmonics straight away. Let's check it out. So this is the basically the SSL 4K uh, E channel compressor. Let's go to the G channel. Not that huge of a difference. See, it looks like the E channel has some more low end harmonics. Let's go to the Neve one. Slightly less than SSL, I would say. More subtle. I actually want to check out one last one. Uh, tape. Tape machine from Slate. What do we have here? Crank the input. Oh. Look at that. Look at the noise it adds as well. That's pretty cool. Huh. But I actually use, to be honest, uh, Waves. What's it called? J... J37. Yeah, that's right. This tape will emul emulator more. Let's try and see what happens if we mess around with the wow and flutter. So let's increase the depth here. You, ac you can actually see the harmonics dancing. Which is pretty cool. Look at this. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Let's crank it. Oh, some really even harmonics. You see here? This is the tone we generated, and this is the harmonics. It's really even, but I mean, it's really cranked now. We can control with the saturation knob, I guess. Get some more peaks. Hmm. That's pretty much it. Just a fun experience or experiment. So if you want to try out your analog plugin, just grab tone generator run it through some plugins and into fab filter or whatever uh, spectrum analyzer you have that's all for today take care man see you next time